Welcome to tutorial 24 and this is the first tutorial in a number of them that are going to involve an op amp or an operational amplifier. Even though this one which is an op amp comparator is the only one that you really need to know for the AQA GCSE course. So looking at it this is the symbol for a 741 the op amp itself it has two inputs which we have an inverting input and a non-inverting input and we have our output which in this case is going to go to an LED and unusually now our power pins one goes to 5 volts and the other one goes to minus 5 volts and we will be using 0 volts as well because our LDR is going to go to 0 volts and our LED is going to go to 0 volts our variable resistor that we're using as a variable voltage or potentiometer in goes to 0 volts and whenever we measure um, voltage with our voltmeters it is with respect to zero so the black black lead will still always go to 0 volts it is just this power supply that goes to minus 5 so let's have a little look at the op amp very quickly and look at our pinouts so our inverting input, this one here, is going to come from pin 2, or go to pin 2. Our non-inverting input, V+, plus, is pin 3. Our output is pin 6. Our positive supply is pin 7. Our negative supply, minus 5 volts in this case, is pin 4. And pin 1 and pin 5 are offset nulls, which we're not going to be using in this experiment. And you won't need to know for GCSE. And pin 8 is never connected. And this is an 8-pin IC, very much like the 555. And those two ICs actually are probably the most commonly used ICs in the world. Just as a matter of interest, the internal view of a 741 looks like this which has many many transistors resistors and capacitors so what we're going to do first of all or perhaps I should explain this is a simple light sensing circuit so that when the voltage at the non-inverting input changes because of the light falling on the LDR the output voltage will change and therefore hopefully will turn the LED on so what we're going to do first of all, we're going to go back to an old experiment, measure the resistance of the LDR in the light and the dark. So here we go, I have my, vol uh, my uh, multimeter set up initially to measure resistance and in the light it tells us that our LDR is measuring about 1000 ohms. I'm just going to write that down as 1000 ohms. So in the light 1k ohms. Next, in the dark, so I cover up my LDR just using a piece of paper and you can see there that actually it's risen pretty much to exactly 10, 10 K ohms. It's fluctuating depending on where I hold that piece of paper. There we go. So I'm just going to use the value 10 K here. It's not too much of a problem to be slightly inaccurate. Right, so if we look at our circuit diagram again, we can see that we have a pull up resistor here RT which is 10k our pull down resistor which is our LDR is what we've just measured it to be so we can calculate what the voltage will be at this point using our potential divider formula so of course we have using the value 1k we have RB which is 1 exponent 3 divided by open bracket the 1k RB, 1 exponent 3, plus the 10k, 10 exponent 3, which is our pull-up resistor, close brackets equals, times our voltage in, which is 5 volts, equals 0.45. So we expect, sorry, we expect the voltage out in the light to be about 0.45 at that point. Next, with it as with it as 10k, well perhaps you can already work this out anyway, but we'll do it. 10 exponent 3 divided by, open brackets, 10 exponent 3 plus 10 exponent 3, close brackets equals, times 5 equals 
2.5 volts because of course they are the same value the pull up and pull down resistor so we expect in the dark it to be 2.5 volts now let's collect it connect it into the circuit we're going to now measure voltage at that point and I'm turning my power supply on so there we go so in the light it is about 0.5 of a volt and indeed we we calculated it to be 0.45 so that's pretty accurate and then I cover it up and it measures about 2.93 volts it's dropping again a little bit so about 2.8 2.9 so that measures about 2.9 which is not too far off so what we're going to do we are going to change the voltage at the inverting input so that the LED has just gone off and hopefully when we cover this up the LED will come on and we can do that easiest by using a variable resistor as a potentiometer so this voltage here will change between 5 and 0 volts and let's have a little look at that so at the moment the LED is off or well, there we go so you will see that it comes on so I'm going to turn it so it just goes off and then I cover up the LDR and the LED comes on perfect and in fact you should be able to see if I make that just a little bit more sensitive so it's on and just goes off there we go even though my hand is quite a way away here you can see the LED coming on so what results do we need to take so we're going to measure the voltage at the inverting pin in the light and at the non inverting pin at the, in the light and say whether the LED is on or off and then do the same readings in the dark so I'm just going to turn this voltmeter on as well so this is my this is my inverting input and this is my non-inverting input labelled so that you can see it clearly and at the moment the voltage of the inverting input in the light so with the LED off is 0.564 in the light 0.564 volts and the non-inverting input is 0 0.520 0 0.520 volts so that's with the LED off next we're going to cover up the LDR and there you go my LED has come on so now the LED is on the inverting voltage is 0.564 still 0.564 because that's from the uh, potentiometer so that's always going to remain the same unless we change it by changing the variable resistor and the voltage at the non-inverting is 2.6 volts so it's climbed considerably I'll do that next measurement in a moment but just have a quick look at this so if we can see this so so at the moment the LED is off watch at what point voltage wise the LED starts to come on now in other words the LED is coming on exactly at the point where this reading at the non-inverting is climbing just above that and we'll come to that again later so now we need to measure the voltage out of the op amp there's only one way to do that and that's to remove the LED because we don't want it interfering with the voltage reading so we know that in the light the LED is off and in the light the voltage at the at the output because this is now the output voltage is reading minus 2.97 volts do you see that's a negative sign there take my hand away because I'm covering up the LDR so that's reading minus 2.98 so in the light it's 2.98 volts minus 
and in the dark the output voltage is 4.37 4.37 volts good so what have we learnt from this circuit and really really importantly because this is op amp theory this is what you need to know about how an op amp works when the voltage at the non-inverting input so V plus is bigger than the voltage at the inverting input as it was here then the output voltage will be high and here it was high and because it was high when we had the LED in the circuit it was on when the voltage at the inverting input is more than the voltage at the non-inverting input as it was here albeit only 0 0.024 of a volt very small amount because this was bigger than this then the output voltage will be low and in this case because we are using a minus 5 volt supply the output voltage is able to go negative and the output voltage was minus 2.98 volts and because this voltage here is negative and this was zero therefore this is not more positive here than it is here the LED was off but when the output was 4.9 volts here it is more positive than it is here and therefore the LED was on this is how an op amp works Let's move on to the next activity. So how, here we have a little circuit where we're going to look at um, some additional op amp comparator work. So what we have is four op amps connected together via this little resistor array here. Now this little resistor array is nothing much more than a potential divider. In that we start with 5 volts, we're going to go down to 0 volts and we divide that voltage up across each resistor which will be the same voltage across each because they are all of the same value. So because there are 5 of them we're dropping 5 volts across therefore we must drop 1 volt per resistor. So therefore we drop 1 volt across here to 4 volts, to 3 volts, to 2 volts, to 1 volt. So let's quickly check that works. So I start at 5 volts. At the first non-inverting input, pin 3, I have 3.96, which is pretty much 4 volts. Next one, pretty much 3 volts. Next one, pretty much 2 volts. Next one, pretty much one volt and all the way down to zero okay so that's the voltages at the non-inverting inputs this is the top 741 as looking on the circuit diagram and this is the bottom one next going to the other input of the 741 we are going to be feeding in this voltage here which is going to come from our LDR from the original circuit let's have a very quick look at that so all we're going to do we still have our pull-up resistor of 10k our LDR and we are going to feed that into now we're going to feed it into the inverting input of the 741s so therefore this voltage will change dependent upon the amount of light falling on it so looking back at that Let's look at that voltage going in. So all I have to do is connect to any of the inverting inputs, which are currently 0.9 of a volt. And as I start to cover up the LDR, you will see that voltage start to rise. There we go. So let's see what this circuit does exactly. I'm going to remove that. And I have four LEDs on. The, the LEDs are 
this one is connected to the top 741 and that one on the right is connected to the bottom of 741. So at the moment they're all on, I'm going to start covering up the light and you can see the first LED has gone off, on, off. Cover it up a little bit more so it's darker and the second one has gone off, on, off. Cover it up a little bit more and the third one has gone off, on, off. And cover it up a little bit more, now I, ah there we go. So I need to be right down on top of the LDR here to block all the light. And you can see here that the last one has gone off. Now what is happening here? Well in the previous circuit, as we covered up the LDR, the LED came on. But now in this circuit, as we cover up the LDR, the LED is going off. And the reason for that is because... If you imagine the voltage, as we looked at, as it gets dark, starts to climb. And as it started to climb, as it went above one volt at this inverting input, the output of this will go low and therefore this LED will go off. When this voltage at the inverting input of this first 741 is lower than the voltage at the non-inverting input, the output is high and that's why the LED was on. So as this voltage starts to climb, this LED goes off. Then this LED will go off as it climbs above 2 volts. As it climbs above 3 volts, this LED will go off. And as it climbs above 4 volts, this LED will go off. So a common, common question sometimes in our exam might be to just fill in our form here. So looking, looking at it, it would expect you to fill in the table as to whether the LEDs were on or off depending upon the voltages. This is the end of the additional work.